I would like now to call the first ever virtual council meeting to order. Thanks to all of you who have joined us this evening in this uh, historic <laughs> first virtual meeting of the Borough State College Borough Council. Uh, I ask everyone uh, to stand for a moment of silence and a pledge of allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible. I'll ask the borough manager, Mr. Fontaine, to begin the roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Fontaine, I would ask uh, the public to give us, uh, cut us a little bit of a break because we're, we're sort of just learning this. Uh, Tom? Philip Pelly. Ron? Tom Fontaine? Mayor Phil Pelly? Yes, roll call, please. Here. Okay. President Barlow. Here. Ms. Baring. Here. Ms. Engelman is here, but having technical problems. Yes, here. she Ms. is Layton. having technical problems. She said here she can hear you and we can see her, but she can't get Ms. her Lafer. audio to work. Here. Ms. Lafer. Here. Mr. Here. Marshall. Mr. Murphy. Here. Mr. Myers. Here. Doug, I can't hear anything. At the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, you may hang up. Now I'm going to move on to uh, an explanation of how this is going to work. I'm going to ask Doug Schantz to provide a brief overview of the virtual meeting procedures. Douglas, the floor. Hi everyone, thank you for uh, joining us for this first uh, first virtual uh, town hall. There is obviously a lot of technical difficulties. This is a huge undertaking for us to move our municipal business completely virtually, but we're doing it amidst the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so please be patient as we work this out. We just wanna make sure that we continue to offer municipal services and hold our regular business meetings. First of all, I wanna go over the uh, details of the virtual meeting. First of all, we are utilizing the GoToWebinar software. And, uh, and so this software allows for attendees to engage in a number, a number of different ways. But first of all, for you to be able to participate in this meeting, you will need to utilize the uh, URL that was sent out in the meeting agenda posted on social media, sent in the legal ad, and it's also listed on our website right now, www.statecollegepa.us slash virtual down hall. This will be a registration URL, but don't worry, it will allow you to actually join the meeting live. But to again, to participate, you'll need to join via smartphone, tablet, or computer, uh, or computer software. Uh, just make sure that you download the GoToWebinar uh, software or application. Also, seeing that on Channel 7 and on their website, we'll be live streaming this, this meeting. Again, you can't participate while watching the uh, meeting live on CNN, but this is it. Uh, just like our regular council meeting, you'll be able to watch it. To go into a little depth about how the uh, virtual meeting will work is all attendees have joined the meeting in listen-only mode. That means that uh, you will need to be unmuted during the, uh, during the meeting to participate in the meeting. And so at adequate times, you need to utilize the raise hand feature or the questions feeder to let the meeting facilitator, Mayor Filippelli, know that you wanna be unmuted and asked to speak. If you have any issues, please email webadmin at statecollegepa.us. Again, that's webadmin at statecollegepa.us if you have any questions. I will now turn the meeting back over to Mayor Filippelli. Thank you, Mayor Doug, appreciate that. Um, we're going to move to special business next, but before we do that, you will note that I am wearing a mask. 
Um, and uh, I wanted to say that this mask I'm wearing was, was uh, made by a state college organization called the Makery, which has mobilized uh, an army of volunteers to provide the borough with, staff, with, uh, with masks for our staff, for our police force, for our public works um, workers. And uh, I just want to give them a shout out and thank them for their generosity and for their civic mindedness. Um, they've done this for the borough without any charge, although we hope to make a significant donation to them. And I would uh, urge any of you who have the inclination to also uh, think about supporting the makery. Let's now go on to special business. Um, at the request of Council President Barlow, uh, Council is being asked to consider two resolutions this evening. First, a resolution in support of Governor Tom Wolf. I will now recognize uh, <coughs> Councilman Evan Myers to read the resolution. Thank you, Mayor Phil Pelley. Uh, this is a resolution in support of Governor Tom Wolf. Whereas COVID 19 has claimed the lives of at least 1,200 Pennsylvanians, and more than 33,000 have been tested as positive for having the disease, and countless others may have been infected but yet to be tested. And whereas COVID-19 has claimed the lives of at least 41,000 Americans, and more than 765,000 have been tested as positive for having the disease, and whereas the Centers for Disease Control, virtually all leading healthcare professionals, and President Donald J. Trump's White House Task Force all strongly urge U.S. residents to practice social and physical distancing, and whereas they have also strongly urged all U.S. residents to remain at home if they are not essential workers or on an essential trip, and whereas the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, under the leadership of Governor Wolf, have implemented such measures, and whereas recent polls, including one conducted by Ohio, or rather Oakland University and Ohio Northern University, found that 70% of Pennsylvanians support or strongly support Governor Wolf's action. Now, therefore, let it be here resolved that the Borough of State College, Pennsylvania, voices its strong support for the governor's policies and actions thus far, and be it further resolved that in order to continue to stem the spread of this deadly disease, that all efforts continue to take place to mitigate and contain its impact on the lives of state college residents and be it further resolved that this council shall undertake any actions it can to reduce the adverse economic impact of the disease and shutdown that will do so with the full knowledge that protecting the health, safety and welfare and lives of our residents is our primary goal resolved on this 20th day of April, 2020. Thank you. Uh, would anyone from council like to make a motion? I will move that this resolution be adopted. I second. Okay, we have we have a motion and we have a second to the motion. Would anyone from council like to be recognized to speak on the motion? I do. Uh, President Bar Barlow, please. Um, with the coronavirus, if we're doing the right thing, it may seem as though we're overreacting. Center County had 73 cases, one death, 26 cases in the 16801 zip code, eight in the 16803 zip code. Without social distancing and restrictions on business openings and, and travel and so forth, there is no doubt in my mind that the numbers would be much higher. The restrictions that Governor Wolf has put in place on people and businesses have been very hard on all of us. Thus, they have resulted in, in business losses, closings, and some job loss. It is preposterous to think that any governor would issue such an order if, if they could avoid it. Moreover, no governor would want to impose such an order twice. If we open the economy too soon, it is likely we will be forced to shut it down again and the losses will be even worse. Governor Wolf and Health Secretary Levine have only done what was necessary to prevent the spread of COVID-19. That is why I strongly and enthusiastically support Mr. Meyer's resolution and thank him for, for writing it. 
Thank you, Mr. Barlow. Any other council members want to speak on this resolution? Does anyone from staff or the student representative want to provide uh, any additional comments? Uh, okay, if there's no further discussion on the resolution, we will now go to a uh, Ms. Baring? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Lafer? Aye. Mr. Barlow? Aye. Mr. Myers? Aye. Ms. Engeman? Aye. Mr. Marshall? The motion passes unanimously. I believe you're muted. You might be muted, Peter. I'm sorry. No, no you're I, not muted. You were muted. You seem to be muted. I'm not muted on my phone. It was coming from Doug, I guess. Are you I voted in favor. on the resolution? I voted in favor. Okay. We didn't hear you. That's why that's why the confusion. Well, I was I was muted by the organizer. Thank you. Second resolution is calling for a moratorium on evictions during the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, I will now recognize, uh, I'll recognize, I should say, uh, Council Member Deanna Baring uh, to read the resolution. <clears throat> Councilwoman Baring. This is a resolution of the Municipality of State College calling for a moratorium on evictions during the COVID-19 pandemic. Whereas the COVID-19 crisis has had a significant impact on the local economy, impacting the retail, restaurant, and other industries, resulting in layoffs and reduced work hours for significant percentage of the workforce and loss of income, especially for small businesses, and whereas layoffs and substantially reduced work hours will lead to widespread economic hardship that will disproportionately impact low and moderate income workers and small businesses, resulting in lost wages and the inability to pay for basic household expenses, including rent and mortgage payments. And whereas evictions for both housing and businesses can result in the loss of housing and create housing instability, potentially increasing the number of people experiencing homelessness, and creating a heightened sense risk of disease transmission. And whereas public resources are not sufficient to address housing stability needs of dislocated workers during this unprecedented public health epidemic. And whereas jurisdictions across the nation are considering or have implemented eviction prevention to provide housing stability to dislocated workers during this unprecedented public health emergency, and whereas a temporary moratorium on residential evictions during the COVID-19 outbreak will protect the public health, safety, and welfare by reducing the number of individuals and families entering into homelessness during this epidemic, which means lowering the number of people who may develop the disease or spread the disease. And whereas local governments in Pennsylvania do not have the legal authority to regulate landlord-tenant relations, including issues related to evictions, rent, or otherwise intervene in these matters. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved by the Council of the Municipality of State College to call on the Governor, the General Assembly, and the Supreme Court of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to establish a moratorium on residential and business evictions for non-payment of rent through at least May 31st, hereby resolved on April 20th, 2020. Thank you, Councilwoman Baring. Um, would anyone from Council, do I have a, do I have a motion to uh, this? So, so moved. moved. Oh. Yeah, Mr. Marshall moving, do I have a second? Second. second. We have a second. All right. Is uh, would anyone from council like to be recognized to speak on this issue? I would. Is that, is that uh, Council President? Uh, 
I've reached the webcam limit, so yes, that's me. Okay, I can't see you. That's why I'm asking. Uh, I, I yeah. seem to have reached the webcam limit. Yeah. But, well, there I am. I, I just want to thank uh, Ms. Baring and, and Mr. Myers for their work on this resolution and the local activists who've kept focus on the issue of evictions resulting from the uh, coronavirus pandemic. I regret that council doesn't have any legal authority on this issue, but I see it as our duty to encourage those in the Commonwealth who do have such authority to act. So far, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court has wisely stopped evictions and foreclosures until April 30th. It would be great for this community and all communities in the Commonwealth if they could extend that order until May 31st. So I strongly and enthusiastically support this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. Anyone else want to speak to the resolution? Yes, uh, Mayor. Mr. Myers? Yeah, I would just like to add that uh, we discussed this at our last uh, council meeting uh, a month ago uh, and uh, brought forward this uh, resolution today. Uh, it certainly, uh, as the resolution states, includes uh, folks who are renting, especially uh, lower and middle income folks, but it also has a large impact on many of our local businesses as well because of their inability to pay rent or mortgage payments because they in fact are closed as well. At the same time, we also have to realize that uh, folks that are receiving rent uh, have uh, mortgage payments due themselves to banks. Uh, this is a full circle uh, that affects uh, all of us and all of us need to uh, be understanding and be accommodating. And that's one of the reasons why uh, I brought this up a month ago and urge that we support this. Uh, this is one step that we can uh, take. We're gonna be making other steps, taking other steps as we go through the night tonight uh, with uh, other things that we can actually do as a municipality. Uh, but this is one in which we are suggesting uh, that folks work together as much as they can and accommodate one another as we work our way through this crisis. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Else on council want to speak on the issue? Uh, would anyone from staff or the student representative want to provide any additional comments? Okay, hearing none, we'll commence the vote. Uh, Ms. Ergler? Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Lefer? Aye. Mr. Barlow? Aye. Mr. Myers? Aye. Ms. Engeman? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Ms. Baring? Deanna? I'm sorry, aye. <laughs> All right, thank you. The motion All passes right. unanimously. <clears throat> motion is passed. All right, uh, now we're gonna move to consent items. Uh, we're going to vote on the consent agenda. The consent items are included in the agenda packet and displayed in front of you on this slide. Please note that every item except the consent agenda will be a roll call vote led by the Assistant Bur Borough Secretary. I would like to ask council members uh, uh, to uh, unmute themselves and would like to pull an item of the, off the consent agenda for discussion. Does anyone on council want to pull an item off the consent agenda for discussion? Hearing none, uh, I will we'll now go to a vote. This will be a voice vote. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, hearing none, that vote uh, passes. So let's uh, now move to the next item, which is to rescind and or cancel all special activities and special events. We're now I'm gonna recognize the borough manager, Mr. Fontaine, with some additional information on this item. Mr. Fontaine, please. Mr. Fontaine. Mr. Fontaine. On activities and special events would you want to read the i'm in a council meeting i'll have to call you back tom are you there 
Tom? I can't get a muted here. Okay. So can you read it? We're experiencing difficulties with the managers. Hold on one moment. He's going to get ready to read it. Just pause for a few minutes here until we get this organized. All right. Can you hear me? Mr. Fontaine? Yes. yes. Okay. At Council's meeting on March 16, 2020, Council took action to approve several measures that were directly related uh, to the borough and the center region COVID-19 response. Those measures were uh, intended to enhance physical distancing and cancel events that, if held, would result in large gatherings of people in our community. At the March 16, 2020 meeting, Council rescinded previously approved special activities and special events scheduled through May 10, 2020. Council was asked this evening to rescind its previous approval and council cancel all previously approved special activities and special events between May 11, 2020 and June 30, 2020. Events that are scheduled to occur after June 30 will be monitored and reviewed on an ongoing basis to determine if those events should also be canceled. Events that are scheduled after June 30, 2020 will be notified that those events may also be canceled depending on the status of the pandemic. Staff recommends that all special activities and events scheduled through June 30, 2020 be canceled. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, would anyone from council like to be recognized to speak? Hearing none. Uh, let's yes, move I'm that. sorry. I, have I, a, I, I, I raised my hand, but that's okay. It's hard to do this. Go ahead. Who is that? Evan. Uh, Evan wants Evan, to speak. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, uh, just briefly, uh, it's with a heavy heart, I think, that all of us uh, support this uh, resolution. Uh, we feel, as uh, we've discussed before, there is not much choice. Uh, this means uh, a lot of uh, festivals, a lot of activities that our community has planned will have to be postponed, canceled, put on hold, uh, perhaps even till next year, next summer when we hope that uh, we're able to uh, take part in and, and enjoy all of these. So uh, uh, it, it's not an easy thing for any of us to do. Any other comments from council? Thank you, hearing none then. Uh, does anyone from staff or the student representative want to provide any additional comments? Hearing none, does anyone from the public wish to speak? Again, please utilize the questions chat box can't hear. or raise hand feature to indicate you want to provide comment. If we'll unmute you at that time and I'll indicate that you have the floor. At any time, please provide your name and home address. Stopping, right? Nothing. So if there are no any additional comments from the public, I'd like to recognize the Assistant Borough Secretary, Ms. Ergler, to commence the vote. Ms. Ergler, please. Ms. Ms. Lafer? Yes. Mr. Barlow? Aye. Mr. Meyer? Aye. Ms. Engeman? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Ms. Baring? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Aye. Motion Mur passes unanimously in favor. Thank you. Uh, let's move on now to the extension of the deadline to pay real estate property taxes. <clears throat> I'm now going to bring Mr. Fontaine, the borough manager, for some additional information on this item. Due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, council is asked to consider extending the deadline to pay real estate taxes at face value. The current deadline to pay is June 30, 2020. Due to the economic hardships created by the pandemic, 
Center County administrators and local municipalities are being asked to extend the deadline to pay property taxes at face value for a longer period of time. Staff recommends that council adopt the attached ordinance amending the deadline to September 30, 2020 to pay real estate taxes at, fa at face value. A roll call vote is required. So moved. Second. Ron, we, we have a motion and a second. Yeah, we do. I'm sorry, I was muted. I'm asking council if anyone would like to speak on the, on the motion. Does anyone from staff or the student representative want to provide any additional comment? Does anyone from the public wish to speak? Again, please utilize the questions chat box or the raise hand feature to indicate you want to provide comments. Staff will unmute you at that time and I'll indicate that you have the floor. At that time, please provide your name and home address. Tom Price. On. Tom Price. Tom Price. Tom. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Todd Price, 860 Bayberry. Uh, I understand that what's right is not always popular. What's popular is not always right. I would urge the council to not extend the deadline. As it's been said before, everyone is still paying rent, collecting checks, and to move this deadline actually might put the count, it might put the borough in some liability with the Federal CARES Act. If you wanted to go and get funding at a later time, specifically if you look at subsection D of the Federal CARES Act, counties that aren't being properly financially prudent might be exempting themselves from future federal funding. So while it might make good sense in a short term, you might be putting yourself in a bad position in the long term if you uh, don't take taxes in. Thank you, Mr. Price. Is there any, any, any more comment from you? Mr. Price? Okay. Okay, so we, we lost him? Uh, no, I, uh, I I got muted there. But uh, again, in terms of where this is going, uh, reading what the Federal CARES Act says, uh, if municipalities are deferring payment, it might make us ineligible for future federal payments. Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Price. Um, any other comments from the public? Okay, if not, I would like to recognize the Assistant Borough Secretary, Ms. Zergler, to commence a vote. Ms. Zergler, please. Mr. Barlow? Aye. Mr. Myers? Aye. Ms. Engeman? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Ms. Baring? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Slafer? Ms. Lafer? Did you hear that? I did not. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's move on now to the <clears throat> Modification of the State High South Track Lighting Agreement and extension of State High South Track Lighting Agreement. So let's move on. I'll ask uh, Mr. Fontaine to provide some additional information. Mr. Fontaine.
Uh, Tom indicates he's lost his connection again. Okay. I'm back. If you can hear me, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So we're we're on the yes. South Track lighting agreement and the extension. Okay. The uh, in August of 2019, the South uh, College Area School District and the borough have entered into an operational agreement in accordance with the zoning code for lighting and facilitating the use of the field designated as the South Track. The agreement renews on August 5 unless either party gives 90 days notice to modify or cancel the agreement. Due to the recent COVID-19 pandemic, the borough and the district have agreed to extend the deadline for review until July 26, 2020. All other aspects of the original agreement of August 5 remain in full force and effect. Staff recommends that council approve the first modification and extension of the state high south track lighting agreement. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> does anyone from council want to make a motion? Well, no, excuse me. Does anyone from council like to comment on the uh, on the issue? How about anyone from staff or the student representative? Would you like to anyone want to comment on the resolution? If anyone from the public wish to speak, please utilize the question chat box or the raise hand feature to indicate you want to provide comment. Unmute you at that time, and I'll indicate that you have the floor. At this time, please provide your name and home address. Okay, hearing none, um, we'll move to a, a vote. Um, I would like to recognize Assistant Borough Secretary Ms. Ergler to commence a vote. Ms. Ergler, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Myers. Aye. Ms. Engeman. Aye. Mr. Marshall. Aye. Ms. Baring. Aye. Mr. Murphy. Aye. Ms. Lafer. Aye. Mr. Barlow. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we'll move on to substantial amendments to the State College Borough plans 2015, 2019, and 2020, 2024, and the 2015, 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 annual action plans. I'll now ask the borough manager, Mr. Fontaine, to additional information. Council is asked to consider approval of the proposed amendments to the 2015 to 2019 and 2020 to 2024 consolidated plans and to the fiscal year 2015 and 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 annual action plans. Council approved the 2020 to 2024 consolidated plan, which includes fiscal year 2020 annual action plan in October of 19 based on estimated CDBG and home budgets. Actual allocations were received by uh, State College on March 18, 2020. Substantial amendment process is required. The Community Development Block Grant budget increased by 2% uh, from 2019, while the home budget decreased by 20%. Proposed budget changes accomplish the following additional program benefits. Adjust the 20 Fiscal year 2020 action plan budget from estimates to actual allocations. Uh, reprograms the community development block grant funds remaining from the completed 2019 uh, infrastructure project, uh, street lights, curb ramps, uh, Sowers, Hetzel, Foster to the 2021 uh, CDBG infrastructure project, street lights, curb ramps, East Beaver Avenue. Responds to a 20.8% reduction in the fiscal year. 20 home funds by allocating prior year and F fiscal year 20 uh, CDBG balances from the borough. Uh, uh, one to the temporary housing facilities, uh, first time home buyer program for 2020 to 21. Adjust goals for the 2020 to 24 capital uh, pro or, or plan, excuse me, and the 2020 
uh, action plan and corrects minor typographical errors. In accordance with the State College uh, Borough Citizens Participation Plan, the substantial amendment process is being fo followed, which includes advertisement of the proposed changes, a 30-day comment period, a public hearing, and action by Borough Council. The public hearing was held remotely on April 9, 2020. Uh, no one attended, uh, no comments were provided, written or oral, uh, were received during the 30-day comment period or during the public hearing. Staff requests that Council consider the, uh, the approval of the proposed amendment that was unanimously recommended by the Community Development Block Grant Citizens Advisory Committee on March 3, 2020, and which are detailed in the attached policy briefing statement on page 35. Staff recommends that Council approve the recommended amendment to the FY 2015 to 2019 and 2020 to 24 consolidated plans and the fiscal year 2015 and 2017, 18, and 19, and 20 action plans. Do I have a motion and second? So moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second, thank you. Um, does anyone from council want to uh, speak on the issue? Yeah, I, I have a question. Mr. Marshall? Um, we received an additional 300 some thousand in CDBG funds. Didn't I read that somewhere? Yes, uh, that that was approved and that will be uh, brought to council in, in May for approval after we follow the public participation plan for the allocation of those funds. So you really have to deal with each of these separately? Yes. Okay. Any other comments from council? Mr. Myers? Yeah, I just uh, have a question for the manager. Because of uh, the uncertainties of the current situation uh, with uh, COVID-19 uh, and potential uh, revenue shortfalls, uh, is there any concern uh, that approving these changes now, uh, that, that those uh, issues, or there may be any issues with uh, realizing the uh, the funding that uh, is described here. No, the the funding in in the programs that are presented this evening are already approved, uh, and this simply allocates those funds. So it, we we are, do, do not expect any uh, any issues with these contracted funds. Uh, Ron. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Labor. Yeah. Um. I've been on the um, block grant committee or was on for about eight years. And this is basically for those who aren't sure, administrative. We are required to send certain things and adjust certain things within a time period or we lose the funding. And so what this is, is doing the adjustments that changes have made both before and during COVID as far as I can tell. And so uh, basically all we were doing are saying, yes, our block grant committee and our staff did their due diligence and we are okaying that so that we can pass this along to whichever office in HUD and or, um, um, housing or uh, any of the other departments in Washington will okay it because we don't want to lose these funds, we need them. Any other comments from council? Would anyone from staff or the student representative want to provide any additional comment? Does anyone from the public wish to speak? Again, please utilize the questions chat box or the raise hand feature to indicate you want to provide comment. Staff will unmute you at that time, and I'll indicate that you have the floor. At that time, please put your name and home address. If there are not any additional comments or any comments from the public. I'll recognize our manager, Ms. Egg-Burglar, to commence a vote. Ms. Erger, please. Ms. Engeman? 
Aye. Mr. Marshall. Aye. Ms. Baring. Aye. Mr. Murphy. Aye. Ms. Lafer. Aye. Mr. Barlow. Aye. Mr. Myers. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. You're welcome. Now let's move to year-to-date financial report. I'll ne now recognize Borough Manager Mr. Fontaine to provide some in additional information on this item. Tom? Uh, before we get into the uh, uh, update, I do want to update you uh, quickly on uh, sewer rate uh, and, and the implementation of the sewer rate increases that were approved as part of the uh, 2020 budget. In December, uh, Council adopted Ordinance 2136, which uh, increased the uh, rates for sewage uh, in State College from $9.35 per thousand gallons to $10.75 per thousand gallons and increased the minimum uh, bill from $28.05 to $32.25. The implementation of this uh, would have, was scheduled to occur with the uh, bills that went out in April, uh, but due to COVID, uh, that increase uh, was postponed for a month while uh, we evaluated uh, what was uh, what was going to transpire or what our expectations were. At this point, uh, we need to notify the Water Authority to prepare for billing, and the staff is recommending uh, that Council approve the def to the deferral of this increase uh, to September 30th of 2020. Uh, coincides with the date for the uh, payment of taxes, uh, but still does implement the increase uh, in the fourth quarter of uh, 2020. Uh, if rather than amend the ordinance, if council concurs with that, a, a, a vote uh, is requested to uh, ratify and approve the deferral of those sewer rate increases until uh, the fourth quarter of 2020. No move. Do I have a second? Um, I'll okay. second it. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, would anyone from council like to be recognized to speak on this issue? Would anyone from staff or the student res representative want to make uh, any comment on this issue? Does anyone from the public wish to speak? Again, please utilize the questions chat box or the raise hand feature to indicate you want to provide comment. Staff will unmute you at that time and I'll indicate that you have the floor. At that time, please provide your name and home address. Seeing or hearing none, um, to, uh, to a vote. Uh, Ms. Ergler, please. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Ms. Baring? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Lafer? Aye. Mr. Barlow? Aye. Mr. Myers? Aye. Ms. Engeman? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I'd like now to recognize the finance director, Dwight Miller, finance director of the Borough of State College. Mr. Miller, you now have the floor. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to cover the financial results for the first quarter of 2020. We'll start with the first slide that shows a chart of the general fund revenue for the first quarter compared with the previous year. Starting at the bottom of the stack with real estate taxes, total collections through the end of March were almost $2 million in 2020 versus $1.4 million in 2019, an increase of 573,000 in collections and real estate taxes. The majority of that increase is related to the millage increase. Uh, the collection ratio for the first quarter is relatively the same as last year. Real estate transfer tax was uh, $1.1 million 
in 2020 this year versus 124,000 last year. There was a rather large transfer in February for the property at 532 East College Avenue that made up the majority of that transfer tax. Earned income tax was uh, relatively even, about 10% up from the previous year, and that varies depending on the timing of monthly and quarterly filers, so that's about where we expected it to be. Local services tax is about level with the previous year as well. And other revenues were up 242,000. The majority of that is related to police services for other townships and the timing of when they were being billed. In 2019, the bills uh, were sent out a little late. So uh, there's just a timing difference. There's not a real dollar difference between the other revenues between the two years. And moving on to a summary of the general funds operating in the next slide. This chart shows total revenues for the period of 2020 for the first quarter of a little over $7 million compared to $5 million, an increase of $1.8 million over the previous year. And we just looked at those on the previous chart. Personnel costs for the first quarter were down about 105,000. Operating costs were up about 151,000. Capital costs were up 27,000. And debt was up 99,000. And that's timing difference of when the interest payment that's due in May was entered in our accounting system. Uh, the accounting system recognizes those bills when they're entered, not when they're paid. Uh, so that's just a timing difference. That's not a real increase in debt costs either. That'll catch itself up at the end of May. Total expenditures for the first quarter were up about 173,000 over the previous year. And which brings us to an operating net of almost 1.2 million this year versus uh, excess expenses over revenues the previous year. So the big the big news there is the big change in real estate transfer tax that we looked at on the previous slide is the big uh, game changer. We expected that increase in real estate taxes in the millage increase, so that's where we expect it to be. Uh, there's no other big surprises in the first quarter. All of the enterprise funds performed uh, where we expected them to be, so I won't spend any time actually going over numbers. You have my full report that was distributed. And um, what every, I think everyone is most interested in is looking forward to see the impact of COVID-19 on the borough. We looked across the organization to try to determine what the impacts would be uh, through the end of May. You know, at this point, we understand that we'll likely be extending the kinds of actions that we're taking through the end of May. And so these would be the financial impacts that we're estimating through that period of time. A year to date cost, we've actually spent real dollars, about $13,000 on technology and other PPE costs to get employees uh, capable of working from home and to protect our employees. Uh, we're estimating total costs related to those things through the end of May to be about 15,000. Uh, overtime for police, public works, and our health services division, uh, we're anticipating about 63,000 in overtime, the majority of that being in the police department. Um, based on the parking system being shut down, we anticipate loss in revenue through the end of May of about 729,000. That uh, parking shutdown also affects the general fund. As you know, the meter on-street meters are collected through the general fund. We anticipate a loss in revenue of about 200,000. And by not enforcing meter and other violations for vehicles, we anticipate a loss in revenue of about 122,000. In the refuse fund, uh, based on the uh, change in the services that we're providing to commercial accounts, that includes commercial accounts, apartments, and condos. Uh, we anticipate issuing credits in the second half of the year, totaling about 250,000. That's assuming that we go back to business in June. And based on uh, what we knew at the time that we put this report together, we were anticipating losses in the sanitary sewer fund because students aren't here and a lot of the high rises are not occupied right now of about 320,000. Um, we recently 
in the last day received some numbers from the Water Authority, and we believe that that's going to increase even more. They're seeing usage across their system down about 20%. We're anticipating that to be higher when it comes to the borough because we have a lot of high-rise uh, buildings that are not being utilized right now. Um, looking further into the future, we know that there'll be an, in, an impact on earned income tax and local services tax. I put a question mark there because uh, it really depends on what the unemployment rate ends up being uh, here in Center County and specifically in the borough as to what impact we'll have. We really won't be able to put numbers to that impact until the fourth quarter when our monthly and quarterly filers file those uh, returns for the second quarter. Um, that was all I have on the financial side. If there, you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. I assume it's, uh, hang on. Yeah, let's, council, questions, Peter, Mr. Marshall? Yeah, I assume that in the uh, near future, you're going to be providing revisions to the budget um, so that we can anticipate some changes in what we're doing. New estimates, capital projects delayed or whatever. Yes, all of the above. Um, Roger Dunlap and I are currently working on financial projections for both the general fund and the major enterprise funds, parking, sewer, and refuse. And uh, Roger is also looking at uh, capital projects. So yes, we will, for the next meeting, have more substantial things to share with you. Other comment from council? Yes. Um, I was going to bring this up later, but it fits here perfectly. I've been contacted by at least one person that I mail and a couple of other people, um, directly or indirectly, properly socially apart from each other when discussing this. But people were concerned for some reason that there was going to be an increase in taxes or fees. I want to point out that we have decreased fees tonight, or at least the start of the new ones. Uh, there are no new taxes. And the other question was spending. Since people haven't got the money to pay, they were concerned that we were going to continue with things as have been, as were originally passed. And I think that this verifies that in the next few weeks, everybody will see exactly which things have been cut and where we will scale back so that we can make things balance and we can help people out at the same time because clearly the community is going to need support and help whether it's directly from the borough or from the region people providing food people providing shelter um, it is clearly something that we are taking into account as we go on and i don't want the people who contacted me to understand that these changes we are aware of them and we are adapting to them, and we do understand that they cannot be covered by new or even regular taxes as they stand now. Thank you, Ms. Labor. Any other comments from council? Hearing none, then we'll end that discussion. Uh, no action is required this evening on the on this item. So I will move uh, to the end of the meeting. A um, couple items. Um, we're not having, the mayor has very little to say except to comment that and to compliment the community on the way that they are adhering to the uh, social distancing, uh, sheltering in place uh, uh, requirements uh, put forth by the, uh, by the governor. I think that the Borough of State College has done a remarkable job and uh, it's much appreciated. Um, now uh, I'll ask the uh, <clears throat> council president uh, Barlow, if he has any comments. Uh, mostly my comment on what you just said is here, here, um, um, that um, I, we have, you know, the, the, had the same number of cases in Center County for the last four days. And uh, our, our curve is, uh, uh, you know, the increase in the number of cases is definitely uh, uh, bending, um, I may that continue, and I know that 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 our uh, the work of every member in this community and 
in practicing uh, social distancing has has had a great effect on this. So that's 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 it. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. Appreciate it. Uh, any comments for the good of the order? Ms. Labor, I believe you had a request. No, I pretty much covered it when we were doing the financials, so I think we're okay. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll Mr. Mayor. A motion to... Mr. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Please. I just have a wanted to make a brief uh, comment. Um, earlier this evening, when we voted uh, on the uh, item and the agenda uh, that uh, covered uh, real estate and uh, property taxes, uh, there had been a question about uh, where that might uh, leave us. Uh, but it's my understanding, it was my understanding before uh, this was put on the agenda that uh, this uh, has been thoroughly checked out and how that it might impact or not impact anything that we might do. And my understanding was that it would have an impact on that. I think that the, um, the manager can also attest to that. Thank you, Mr. Mark. My other comments for the good of the order. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. I have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Uh, much appreciated. We'll had a few glitches, but I think uh, all in all, it uh, went re reasonably well. Stay safe. Yeah. Night, everybody. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Um, and uh, stay home.